What's going on guys? Welcome back to Spirit Change. Today we've got the Christopher Nolan 4K collection. We're going to discuss today about Dunkirk. We're not going to get into any kind of plot details. We're only going to give you our thoughts on the video and audio quality. But first, let's do this quick unboxing. <music> so we sat through the whole movie it was like an hour and 50 minutes long it was gripping very tense a lot of tense moments if not a little bit boring some may say that <laughs> this is my second time watching it it was kind of tough to sit through it because i already saw it i knew what was going to happen yeah it's my first time watching it nah, i thought I, I thought it was a little slow but visually from a from a video standpoint from a technical standpoint i thought image quality was was almost perfect man this thing looked fantastic yeah, yeah absolutely when anyone watches a 4K Blu-ray, they're looking for those sharp moments. They're looking for those moments that say, wow, this looks 4K. And in this film, you have a lot of those moments. Because most of the movie is shot in IMAX, because a lot of it is full screen, it's gonna take up a majority, or if not all, of the screen that you have. If you're on, you know, the platform of a TV, over here we have the projector, you know, so it's a little bit different. You're gonna get a lot of those standout moments where you say to yourself, wow, that's 4K. Yeah, that looks like, Dare I mention to say it? I think it's something like, is it like 80%? Like an 80 20, maybe 75 Yeah, that's what some people are saying. Right. So, I hate to bring it up, but Planet Earth, right? That's real life. That's not something that you see a whole lot of styling and effects on, no grain and all that stuff. So, I'm going to kind of compare it to that in the sense that it's very, very sharp, very vivid, very clear. Yeah, of course, you have your little bit of styling to it because it is a film, because it is fantasy. But in the end, shot on IMAX. 4K. The DI on this thing. But is this? This is not fantasy though. This is true life. This was based on a true story. This was. We can't forget about that. And I know a lot of people like our discussions. So, as you've heard, we're not just talking about the video and audio on this. We're going to talk a little bit about the film as we have. And yeah, it's not fantasy. This is something that really happened in real life. So I think this whole thing about it looking very real, it looking lifelike, lends to the style and the theme and the story of this film. So for like sharpness quality wise, I mean, this was shot on 35 millimeter and 75 millimeter IMAX cameras. So, I mean, when you're getting those those large blow up shots that are gonna fill your screen, which is like 80%. So if you guys are watching on a TV screen, it's gonna fill the entire field of view. It's gonna fill your entire screen. You're not gonna get the letter boxing on the top and the bottom. For those times where it does cut to the letter boxing parts, you know, you guys are gonna know it. But for the full screen moments, those IMAX cameras, man, these things are like super 4K crisp, super 4K sharp. This is like reference material, demo material. It looks like it's almost shot on digital. That's right. Yeah, a lot of people will say that digital is better because of extra qualities that you have when it comes to you know giving characters to the film. But you have to remember that film being an analog medium, as Christopher Nolan has praised and has praised in the past, it's something that has its own character, and we see that here. And you know, one of the best parts about that is you get that sharpness. And for all the grain haters out there, if you're a grain hater, there's almost zero grain in this. Yeah, so it's you, pretty crazy. you'll have a good time watching this one. But for as far as like detail is concerned, I mean, there's obviously the close-ups, super crisp, super sharp. I mean, there's wrinkles, there's little pores, little details. You can see the fine lines in the hair, um, the wool coat, wool coats of the... Um, the soldiers yep that's that's super super crisp super sharp you can see the little little fuzzies off the wall um i think there's a there's like a wooden boat that's like handmade or something like that is there like a u-boat or something maybe not a u-boat but they're like some kind of a like handmade boat you can see the texture on that yep like the wood stain the age of the wood super crisp they're on the beach little little specklets little of the sand pieces of sand in there yep. crystal clear looks fantastic Resolution is great. Yeah, resolution is great. Like we said, IMAX cameras on point. And then those moments when Tom Hardy is up in the air and there's dog fighting going on. Those were some very good moments. And as far as the visuals were concerned, you see all the little instruments in Tom Hardy's aircraft. Very crisp. Everything about that thing, when he's writing on it with a little piece of chalk, you could see it. You could see every time he's writing something. You could see how vivid that is. You could see how clear. The chalk is on his on his um, instrument panel there. Not to mention, you can't forget the Omega watch that he wore in the movie. There's a nice shot of the Omega watch. If you guys are watch collectors, you know what Omega is. It's a very prestigious brand of watches. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I saw this movie for the second time today. 
And the first time I saw it, I didn't realize it. I saw it in the theater. Probably not one of the best theaters around, but then I saw it here today. I saw it in 4K. And today is when I noticed the Omega watch that Tom Hardy was wearing. We're probably going to have to look it up, or we'll probably have to reference it below in the, in the um, description what kind of a watch exactly it was, but that's what I'm trying to get at, guys. The 4K quality in this was so good that I noticed something in it that I didn't notice before. And what do you think about the black levels? Black levels were great, man. These things were like spot on, which leads us to HDR. These yeah. here look great. Although yeah. there's a moment in chapter four, I think there's an exterior shot of when they're kind of going in the boat or in the ship. Yeah. There's a, slight, there's a little bit of pulsarization there on the kind of on the left side of the screen. That's like really, that's kind of like the, the only real problem that I really noticed. Um, but it's very faint. I mean, you probably won't notice it on the TV because it might, I mean, you know, the display might be a little bit smaller. We're watching on a larger screen. Yeah. So it's a, it was a little bit more noticeable. I mean, we kind of had to look for it, but it was there. Yeah, that's right before they're about to eat the peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Or they're just the peanut right. butter with them. Yeah. Detail is all over the place in this film. And I think we hit the nail on the head when it comes to black levels, when it comes to sharpness, when it comes to how the realism and the nice looking real life effect of this film lends itself nicely to the story. But also, I mean, we're getting some really good color rendition, especially in the uh, exterior shots when they're on the beach. I mean, you can see the, the, the highlights, the sun reflecting off the water. You're going to see... Yeah, you see the water was like a little green. It's got that nice little glisten to it. Yeah sunlight shining off of it you're gonna see the explosions i mean there are a few explosions here as well super bright colors very vivid very bright blinding at times reference quality for for hdr and for color now with that said what's gonna help bring out the visuals it's gonna be the audio it's gonna be the audio yeah and that's one of the things that christopher nolan did in this film is that he really designed it around audio yeah he's got the story in there yeah it's real life story and everything I actually heard people, veterans, that survived this, that they watched this film and they felt like they were there again. And what do some directors say? That audio is half, if not more, of the experience. Unfortunately for this film, its home theatrical re or its home release is not an Atmos. It's only 5.1. So we were getting that DTS HD Master Audio, which was good. It's not good, right? Yeah. But it was, it was surround sound. It, was, it wasn't atmospheric sound. And that would have really helped, like Shane said, when those guys were in the boat and the Germans were using the outside of the boat for target practice, it would have really helped at that moment because we would have felt like we were in there with them. I think that also at the beginning of that chapter, there's somebody walking across exactly, the, the yeah. top of the ship yep. where it doesn't sound like they're coming from the top. It's, it's just kind of panning across the front speakers. It's implied that they're up there. Even though they're looking upwards, but everything's kind of in the front sound stage. Yeah. So it kind of loses that effect. I mean, there are some good discrete effects. Yeah. Just some front left to right panning, you know. Other than that, I mean, I think most of the weight is going to be on the musical score. Yeah. Which is kind of like a recurrent theme. It is. Now that we've, we've watched pretty much every movie in this whole collection here, I don't want to say sound design is kind of weak, but as far as like discrete effects and, you know, really giving you a, a very good envelopment of sound, I think it's more and more towards the musical the musical score yeah. which uh you know which is, sounds fantastic it's very detailed very rich very wide up front really helps bring out the uh the tension within the movie it sounds fantastic but if you're looking for like really discreet minute effects happening in the back corner of your room or on top of your head none of these movies are gonna do that for you but if you're just looking for a very good enriching sounding score i mean these are like second to none i think it's like hans zimmer the yeah. Hans Zimmer scores. Yeah, I feel like Chris Vanola wouldn't do a movie if he didn't have Hans Zimmer with him, or if he didn't have good music at all. Because in the Prestige, Hans Zimmer is not in that one; it's somebody else. Yeah, it's like he won't even touch a movie if the score isn't up to his standards. Because the movies they live by that, especially this one, especially Dunkirk, and he did, he uses something in this one that he used in Interstellar, and it's the uh, it's, it has to do with the notion of time, and it's that ticking clock that you always hear. And yeah, that's something that you constantly hear in this mix. In some cases, probably even louder than the dialogue, which can kind of be a shame because when I went to go see it in the theater, it wasn't like that. I feel like I heard the dialogue a little bit louder and I feel like I heard the guns and the aircraft a little bit louder when Tom Hardy was shooting him, shooting the, uh, the other guys in the air. But uh, in any case, that's a recurring theme like Shane said in these films and especially this one where the audio of the music is a lot higher than that of the sound effects. Missed opportunities. Yeah, another missed opportunity for Atmos. I mean, I wish they would have 
incorporated that because that would have been a way for people that are non-believers in that most or people that are newbies to that most to understand hey you know Chris Nolan Hans Zimmer you know one of the best movies of the year probably going to be up for an Oscar but he always gets snubbed anyways but um maybe not on this one because of the uh the visuals are so good let's not forget about that bass the bass in this movie is like tremendous super ultra low frequency bass if you have a subwoofer that's up to the task I mean, your room is going to just vibrate and shake without even being audible. Your rooms, the walls are just going to vibrate. Yeah. And then you'll just get a, a huge explosion of bass, especially during the uh, the airplane scenes when bombs drop. Mm-hmm. Fantastic bass. I mean, that's like 10 out of 10 for bass response here. I mean, the music still kind of overshadows it a bit, but it does rumble, and it rumbles very strong. So that's something that once you watch this film, that's one of the things that you're definitely not going to forget. It's going to be the bass. But as far as uh, video quality, what are you going to give this? I give this one a 9.2. Let's go ahead. I give it a 9.2. Yeah, I'm going to go there as well. I'm probably going to go 9.5, a little bit higher. The only thing that I thought was kind of bad was that little posterization, posterization yeah. that was there. And that was a little off, but other than that, man, it was almost perfect. I mean, this thing looked, looked fantastic. Yeah. Audio quality? Well, you already know, not going to be as high as the video because of the lack of Atmos. So with that said, I'll give it like, the sound effect was good. I didn't say too much about the bullets and a couple of other uh, details that are kind of hard to uh, to come by in this one. Like bullets, ricocheting, all things and stuff like that because they're, they're kind of scarce. So like a 7.8 because it's good, but it's, so it, it has weight, it has merit. The base is there and everything and that's what brings it up all the way to like a, almost eight but the lack of atmos and the lack of a few other things like that um missed opportunities is what keeps it from being like an 85 or 8.5 or 9 for me yeah definitely not reference material for me i don't think it's i want to say it's demo in the respect that there's great base if you want to show like a good if you're working in a retail store you want to show off some subwoofers yeah a lot of good material here for that yeah if you want a good movie for surround envelopment this part is not going to be the movie for you. Oh. You're just not missing. You're missing that that bubble of surround. No bubble of surround. Unfortunately, that's that's kind of bad. It's like I, like he said, it's a missed opportunity. There could be there could be some fantastic effects going on overhead and just behind you, around you, but it's just not there for me. I'm I'm probably going to give it like a six point five, maybe six six point five, just for like just for that surround envelopment. But if you know if I was going to base it on like musical score and just like impact man that's that'd be like an eight but i mean in this day of atmos and immersive audio effects man it kind of misses the boat here yeah if you check online it was done in atmos i think in the theater was in atmos yeah in the theater yeah you could you could check out tech specs online that this thing is in atmos this thing has all kinds of you know up-to-date audio formats like atmos I forget what else is there. There's like Oro 3D, I believe as well. I'm not yeah. sure if it, this was this had that, but it had something else other than Apple's when I checked the tech specs. I can't remember what. For this one, for the for this release to resort down to a high-end Blu-ray standard, it's kind of like what? We're kind of we're kind of surprised by that before this uh, collection came out. Now, if you guys are interested in purchasing this movie or the entire collection, there's going to be a link in the description down below. Now, by using those links, it helps the channel, and it also helps us bring you reviews just like this one. And it helps us get more of these, more collections, more 4K Blu-rays to review. And don't forget, follow us on social media, Spare Change Instagram, Spare Change Facebook, and Spare Change's Twitter channel. Don't forget, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, comment, and if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.